Fall in Labrador. It's late October. Soon, the snow will come. But before winter sets in, there is work to be done, money to be made in the Labrador bush. In Labrador, fall is the time of the trapper. Like most of the trappers here, Frank Phillips is a part-timer. He works with the Provincial Wildlife Department in Happy Valley. Frank's interest in trapping has led him to set up a trapper education program. He travels Labrador, telling trappers how they can get better prices for their pelts by dealing directly with the Provincial Trappers Association. He's also encouraging trappers to use more modern and humane traps, like the muskrat cage he set on this river. So this is a good spot here to catch muskrats? This is a good spot, yeah. The, the brook is, uh, the marsh is narrowed up here, and most of the rats traveling in this marsh will, will travel through this narrow spot here. Now you say this is a humane trap, how is it? Uh... It's humane. The animals go in there and they can't come out, so they, they drown. Uh, of course, the traps completely underwater. You see, uh, there's a funnel here. The funnel is painted black and there's a hole in it. And the animals see the hole and they, yeah. they go in the hole. Now you see this door here? That works one way, you see? I see, so it doesn't swing out, so the animal, once it, he's in there... It just swings in, and that's all. Once he's in there, he stays in there. Um, but he doesn't last too long, three or four minutes, and that's it. And, uh, there's a nice one there. That's a big one. That's an old one. Oh, I get five or six dollars for that one. Do you normally get this many in, in, in trap? In this kind of trap, yeah. No problem at all. One there. Four. Five. Six. You got the whole dang family. Seven. Eight. I think that's all of them. Yeah. So uh, it's pretty efficient. You get them all in a hurry. Next, Frank took me to a beaver dam on the Churchill Road, a few miles from Happy Valley Goose Bay. By feeling the bottom of the pond with his feet, Frank was able to find the paths the beavers use to get back and forth to their house. The trap he set for the beavers is called a Connie Bear. It's a powerful, spring-loaded device designed for a quick and humane kill. This one obviously did the job. A good-sized beaver with a pelt worth about $40. Frank is trying to get trappers in Labrador to switch from the traditional leg hole traps to the more efficient Connie Bears. As you can see, it, it, it's a good trap. It, it makes a good, clean catch. Uh, every time underwater, and uh, I don't think this beaver was alive very long once it got in the trap. So let's uh, take him out of there now and you can uh, show me how the trap itself, how it works. Okay. Uh, what you do is you, is you put this uh, down on the beaver's run. Uh, you've got to run felt out with a few of horses, like a path. And these points here, these points you got left there, they dig into the mud so that the trap lies flat on the bottom. Okay, Frank, let's... Uh... Let's just see how the thing works here now. Okay, we'll take the safety off first. Now you can just take that sticky out there and just poke it in there. Show away. Yeah, just, uh, just poke hit it that in trip there. Wire, that yeah, trip wire hit right that there. Trigger there, yeah. Mm. Dang, yeah. So that, uh, that gives him a good, yeah, good, a, good a, a, a good blow, and uh, and he's four feet on the water. So I think that'll take me out, let alone. Yeah, that's, they're quite powerful. 
So that's just, stun I mean, if it doesn't kill him, it stuns him, and of course, then he drowns without feeling anything. Exactly, exactly, that's the whole idea. Yeah. So these are, so those, that uh, muskrat trap we saw, and uh, and this trap here now, they, so, those, those types of traps that uh, you want to see used. Yeah, that's right. Well, well we've got some others too, uh, different kinds of things, but uh, that's what we're trying to get trappers to adopt. This sort of thing. This this kind of thing wasn't always on, available to trappers, but now it's available, and we're, we're trying to show people how it works and get them to use it. The Churchill Road, about a hundred miles west of Happy Valley Goose Bay. This is the home of the Labrador pine martin. Unlike its cousin on the island part of the province, the Labrador martin is thriving. So every fall, pickup trucks clatter up the Churchill Road in search of the martin. This is Woodrow Lethbridge. His profession is a helicopter mechanic in Goose Bay. His passion is going into the country to trap each fall. For the past three years, Woodrow has been setting his traps here on the Churchill Road. Well, the first year up here we did, uh, I consider exceptionally well, uh, approximately 110, 120 skins of fur for maybe a total of two, two and a half months. No, it's, it's, I consider it pretty fair. What kind of fur were, were they? Mostly Martin. Uh, approximately 90 Martin and the rest of them were you know, a few mink and otter, fox. That's about it, I guess. But it's, it's slacked off since then? Oh yeah, much. Yeah. Last year, down to maybe a total of 60 skins. And, this year, next to nothing so far. Woodrow has a hundred traps along the roadside. Half are the old style leg hole traps, half are the new Connie Bears. Within a couple of years, he hopes to use nothing but Connie Bears. Okay, here you have a, a box Martin set. Just a small plywood box with a, a screen at the back end of it here. And you put the bait. Right in the back of the box, you see a piece of fish there. Maybe that's about it for that one. And in the front of the box, you got the conny bear trap, five inch conny bear trap. The guy comes up here, Martin or, or a mink. Sometimes you get, you said I'm for mink. He's up here and he wants to get that bait. Maybe he'll come around the back here and see if uh, there's an easy way, but of course you can't get through, so he comes back in and he goes through the front. And what do you have? A killer right there to meet him. Do you find the, uh, like, I know you got a few leg hole traps. Which trap do you find is better? These are. This is a cleaner trap. It's, it's you know you got a cleaner animal to deal with, and uh, it's, uh, it doesn't do any movement whatsoever. It's finished when it gets in that thing. It was on to the next Martin trap. So far, it wasn't shaping up as a good day. I hope we have better luck here than we had the last few traps. Take a look, see what we can find. Oh, one more. That's right. No. Oh. Is that normally anyway good? Yeah. I got for bait in there. There's a, a bit of old partridge in there. Cleanings. Uh-huh. Nice dark one. How much would he be worth? It's the old female. Oh, let me see. I'd say probably in the vicinity of seventy dollars. So, what would be a good day for you now, uh, checking your traps uh, up and down the road? How many Martin? A good day up here for me would be probably five or six. A good day. So An average day for the number of traps would be four. You seem to be getting pretty scarce. Well, they're getting very scarce in this area, anyways. There's nothing to say that they're not. Lots of them, ten, fifteen, twenty miles, maybe across the Churchill River, or you know maybe north on the next bunch of ridges or something like that. You know, if, if they feed out an area, then they got to go somewhere else and look for, look for feeding. Or that's, my, that's my thought of it anyways. And I think that's what, that's what happens. They just uh, 
follow feed. So you're not worried that they might be trapped out along this no, road? No, no, no. They, uh, two months from now, there could be, uh, could be numerous here. You know, they could be a bunch of them moving from north to south right now, or south to north, and you get, uh, you know, you could hit this road and there'd be lots of them. No, uh, I better reset that trap, I would say. By day's end, that lone marten was all we had to show for 100 traps. And the six or seven other trappers in the area weren't doing much better. It costs several hundred dollars to set up camp on the Churchill Road for a few weeks trapping. Empty traps mean it's a losing venture. I asked Woodrow about that and about the increasing pressure from protest groups to put a stop to trapping altogether. I don't agree with a lot of their, a lot of their attack. It's uh, the animals. Well, the animals will die a lot harder death than, than the trapper will take them. That's for certain. Uh, as I, you know, I mentioned to you before on this on this run, I, I'd take any of them any time on my trap line. Uh, it's uh, I feel that that we're advancing so well now in in humane methods of trapping that. Uh, that uh, I could prove them that it's not, not as bad as they think it is. As for doing it and not making any money, as I said, I, I, uh, it's something that I've done since a kid and it just won't leave me. It, it, uh, I'm gonna continue to do it. Maybe one year I will make a buck, you know, but uh, I'm not heading for that. It's just something that uh, I wanna do. the Nascopi River. A beautiful place of soft mists and lingering silences. Rolling up from the river are steep hills clad with stands of high, thin forest. This is lynx country. The trappers call them cats. Their fur has become one of the most highly prized items on the international auction block. Every year for 35 years he's been coming here. Up from Northwest River, 40 miles up Grand Lake, 20 miles up the Nascopi. He's a part-time trapper now, a month's holidays in the fall, a few skidoo trips in the winter. But there was a time when Louis Montague did this full time. He'd be a guide in the summer, then in the fall he and his father would travel up the Nascopi and set their trap lines. Louis has kept that tradition alive, still working a few of the lines he and his father used to work together. The season has been open a week, and so far the fur has been scarce. Today was one of the better days, a couple of Martin. There's more than $200 here, but Louis is after the big fur, the lynx. Who knows, maybe tomorrow. The evenings are spent working with the pelts, putting them on stretching boards so they'll dry properly and keep their shape. Louis shares his cabin with Lee Bakey, a young trapper who's also from Northwest River. Lee started trapping three years ago, and he's been doing well. Last year, 
he trapped a lynx that fetched the highest price at a fur auction, $750. Early morning, and smoke drifts lazily from a trapper's cabin across the river. Lee Bakey has gone by boat to his trap line, while Louie and I head up into the hills behind the cabin. We follow the route of an old Indian portage, winding our way through the thick woods. Louie has mostly leg hole traps on this line, but he hopes to eventually change over to county bears. Four miles from the cabin, the forest behind us, we reach the high ground, lynx country. Lynx trap. You see, this one knows that it was in the open. And we call that a nap trap, like it's not in a house, like the other, some of the other ones. But it's set in the open so that the lynx, you know, will go to a trap better in the open than they will in thick brush. Because of curiosity sake, I suppose. Why do you call it a nap trap? We call them nap trap, I don't know, because of the, the mound it's on, I guess, eh? It's up on a mound. Nap, I guess, uh, explains it. Any sign of lynx? Yeah, here? you can see you sign of lynx around here. They, every year they uh, put, you know, come and set up high and leave their droppings around, as you can see around here. And uh, So look at these droppings here now, are they, uh, are they old? That's lynx, no. Some of that is new. In fact, one of them, since I set the trap there a few days ago, uh, those droppings are all right, right around it, so I mean, he was he was here, but he never stepped in the trap. Yeah, he was here now, but never since I since I set the trap, but he never stepped on the trap. Eh? Yeah, everything too new, I think. The bait under the trap and rubbing a stick here, scent on that beaver pride I use it. That's so you don't right. use meat running for bait; you just use the scent, is it? Just scent, yeah. Pretty good. That's good enough. Eh? Sometimes you put a bit of fish around. Rubs it around there. It doesn't matter. You don't really have to have it, I suppose. As long as you got some kind of a scent, that's good enough for lynx. It's good to see that they're going around anyway. <laughs> In the old days, Louis and his father followed this trail nearly 40 miles into the country. Now, this trap at the top of the hill is the end of the line. No links today, but Louis has special memories of this particular trap. This trap here is where you, got, you saw your first links, was it? Yeah, the first one is, is about 12 years old. It's, the first time I seen a links in trap is right here, in that trap there. But, uh, I had a good many there since. What's the best year you ever had for a uh, catch, you call them, I think, is it? The cats had, uh, myself and old man had uh, 70, I believe it was 72 one year altogether. I trapped in the fall for one month with him on my annual leave, and he went on all the winter, of course, and then made up, I think it was 72. But in three weeks or a month I was here, we had 30, 30 lynx and 40 or 50 fox that year, too. It was a good year for fur, you know? Um, what were the prices like back then, suppose, about Oh, they were only going $8, 6 $8 a piece. And, Hardly worth anything. We were really out for mink, you know. Mink was a good price for then. But, Link, uh, lynx are worth a darn lot, lot more now, aren't they? Lynx is worth a lot more now, yeah. You get, you get trouble to know that the pop lynx population is down, see? Hell of a job to get them. But they're going to the summer average now, somewhere around three, 300, 350 okay. average. Well, if you get uh, 30 or 40 uh, with that price, you'd be, uh, you'd yeah, be laughing. Wouldn't, wouldn't mind getting 40 or 50. No, at that at that price. I think the problem is, I mean, are they trapped out or are they just gone away out of this? this no, they're territory? not trapped out. They're just a population decline. You know, they just it happens now, every now and then, and, and they they go away in another five or six years. They'll probably be back just as plenty as ever again. Next day, we head up the Red Wine River, which flows into the Nascapi near Louis' cabin. Louis has to take it slowly. The summer was a dry one. The water level in the red wine is very low. Joining us on the trip is Doug Blake, a wildlife officer from Northwest River. I soon found out 
why we needed three men to make this trip. Some places were just too shallow. Doug and I had to get out and pull, while Louis kept the boat out in whatever little channel there was. When the river deepened again, it was back in the boat and across to a small island where Louis had set some beaver traps. At last, a bit of luck. Close enough. Good. Only a small beaver, worth maybe thirty dollars. But after so many empty traps, it was a reassuring sight. Small so you want. that trap here anymore. We were nearing the end of the line, and we'd been all but shut out. Just one more lynx trap to check, and Louis wasn't optimistic. He's been at this a long time. He knows what to look for. He saw very little sign of lynx, and what sign he did see, he didn't like. Wolf tracks. Plenty of them, and they were fresh. Louis has little time for wolves. They often get to the traps before he does and destroy whatever might be in them. As it turned out, this trap was empty. But many times, Louis has had an animal trapped, only to have it mangled by wolves. It happened to me a few years ago. They had a lot of furries eat up me. They would eat everything else out of the trap, but the damn things they wouldn't get in the trap themselves. Take the bait away and everything. And turns the trap over, strikes them up. But you seldom get one, you know? And if you do, you usually break the chain or tear up the trap or do something, all he gets away. So no one around here tries to trap him? No, not, nobody sets a real wolf for a, sets a proper set for a wolf, eh? Sometimes you shoot them, you know? You see them around in, in the snow, come deep snow, and now you get a chance for them. Shoot them sometimes. Are they worth anything? Well, they're worth it, yeah. They're, some of their, they're worth somewhere around 80 to 100 dollars for pelt. But they're more of a nuisance than anything else. They're more of a nuisance than anything else, yeah. Well, you're not doing too well so far, but you're, you're, no, not, giving, not, you're not giving up hope yet, are you? No, I give up hope, but they don't look good. Maybe we'll pick up a week or so of time. All right, push on it. Well, things did not pick up. Louis had one of his worst years ever. He did get a few marten, beaver, and otter. Lee Bakey managed to get two lynx, but Louis didn't trap any. Yet some 70 miles to the south on the Churchill Road, it was a different story. Woodrow Lethbridge trapped 32 marten, and he also got two lynx. So trapping is a gamble. You get your good years, and you get your bad. If you make some money, fine. If not, it doesn't really matter to these men. 
They'll be back next year and the year after that. It's a part of them, an irresistible urge to take to the country and work the trap lines when fall comes to Labrador.